We got brand new merch, baby. Mmm. What's good? Look at this quality. What's up now? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Shorts and a hoodie, a sweatsuit? Are you kidding me? These socks? Are you slapping me in the face right now? Oh, summer tie-dye, my bad. What's up now? Guys, we got brand new merch that just went on sale right now. I really love it. Um, I switched to a new company and they're fantastic. The quality is impeccable. They all come with these purple coat tags on them and they feel fantastic. It's not gonna take forever to ship. Um, I'm really stoked about this. These were designed by a guy, I, I'll, actually a, another Calgary boy that I know from home, his name is Math and he's amazing. And just go to Kodash Official if you want something, I appreciate you if you do. All right, on to the video today. So Netflix right now is putting the finishing touches on uh, its, I'm sure to be game-changing new reality show, Sexy Beasts, where, where people wear like elaborate makeup and masks and they flirt with each other. And <laughs> and try to fall in love. I'm not kidding, that's a real show that's coming out. While they finished that up, they quietly just released the first few episodes of last year's hit reality TV smash, Too Hot to Handle. That's right, baby, it's back. It's back in a big way. This is the show that you know Netflix put out last year that gave us so some social media superstars like Francesca Farrago. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her or not. Harry and Harry Jousey, too. And it's back with 10 new super hot sizzling singles. That's not my verbiage, by the way. That's the trailer's verbiage. We've got 10 new super hot sizzling singles. And they are pretty sizzling, let me tell you. What do these singles come right off the grill? <laughs> They're sizzling. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the first season and you don't know what this show is about, the premise is very, very simple. They take 10 super hot sizzling singles right off the fajita plate and they stick them in a house together and they tell them you can't hook up. And if you do, you lose money. There's a, pr there's a prize money that you get at the end if you don't hook up. And if you hook up, money comes off the prize pool, right? Pretty simple. The whole thing is about developing real connections with people without sex mucking everything up, as sex does. Last year I watched the whole first season and I did a review about the whole thing. And my thesis was that the show sucked. It sucked because it goes against everything that trash TV is supposed to be, which is trash. It removed the trash. Why are you taking out the trash? It's not trash day. They took out the sex. It's the only thing that sells. So you all know sex sells and you took it out and now the show sucks. It sucked. It turns out really hot people don't really want to develop real connections with other people because why would they? Why fucking would they? They're hot. It totally defeats the purpose of being hot to develop real connections with people. Well, despite my scathing, nay, sizzling review on the show, Netflix decided to bring it back for season two. And it just came out today. And I watched the first episode and I decided to give you my honest opinions on the first episode. So this, this season takes place in a beautiful sizzling villa in Turks and Caicos. Every contestant thinks they're going on a show called Parties in Paradise, which right away should have been a red flag to these people in the casting process, you know? Because they should have been like, there's a, really, what is, there's another show like that? How many reality shows could there possibly be about hooking up in a tropical place? There's like 5,000 now. Parties in paradise? Really, that's all, we're just partying in paradise, that's it? What's the catch? What, are, what's the, what's the point? Are there, what, are the challenges different? You know, it's a reality show. There's supposed to be challenges, right? What differentiates this show from the other shows about fucking on the beach? But of course, they didn't ask any questions because, you know, the people they cast aren't the brightest. And um, why, again, why should they be? They're hot. Let's meet one of them. I hate rules and I do not follow them. I hate rules and I do not follow them. Commitment kind of scares me. I've committed like probably twice. I was with my ex-boyfriend at a bar and I left him and was with a guy in front of him that I used to see before him. In front of his face. I'm crazy. Hell yeah. Good, good girl. I've committed like twice. Except for crimes, of course, because uh, I've committed tons of crimes because I don't like rules. I don't follow them. I'm here to have fun. I am not here to be in a relationship or to find someone to fall in love with. Uh, well, I got some Bad news for you, unfortunately. I got some really bad news. So what about the dudes? What do we think? What kind of dudes do we think we got uh, joining us today? Ugh, I hope tall. Well, yes, obviously, but what else? I just think about it. I also like bald guys. 
Is that weird? <laughs> that wasn't what I expected her to say there, honestly. I kind of respect it. But uh, something tells me there will not be many bald dudes on this show. So the first season was entirely narrated by this woman that tries to be a kind of cheeky, self-aware layer on top of the classic reality TV format. Which, by the way, they completely stole from Love Island. Well, this year, she's back. And the writing that they give to her is just, it's so, it's not the best. I got a feeling this hunk is no stranger to being covered in cream. What? Did you just say this hunk is no stranger to being covered in cream? What's up? Anyways, this dude right here is a stripper. He's a British stripper. He's got a British accent, and his job is to make people horny. I mean, they really went above and beyond on the casting for this season. Seriously. That blonde chick is already batshit crazy, you can tell. And this dude is just the definition of what sex is. And then you have this next girl who comes on and describes herself as a pair of open legs. Really. My friends would describe me as mysterious, quiet, laid back. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm like a set of open legs. <laughs> what you see is what you get. I'm not a set of open legs. <laughs> what? One thing I love about these shows is, you know, I think their main intention is to cast people that are horny. Whereas, like, in shows like Love Island, it's like you have to be able to, to have the chat, you know, the ba uh but in this show, it's like the, the only requirement is that these people are horny. That's basically it. So they're really bad at flirting. The flirting is really bad, like right off the bat. You know, it's also because they're hot. It's like, it's like they have no real need to be funny or charming. You know, they're not used to having to do that. They're not used to having to be those things. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, six foot, but, uh, six foot one, if we're like, are you? if we're at a push, yeah. I was gonna say like 5'11". I mean, no, nah, it's not 5'11". Oh, it's not 5'11". We'd have to say 5'11". <laughs> Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> How tall are you? Six foot, six foot one, like, on a good day. I was gonna say, like, 5'11". Ha, <laughs> no, no, we don't, we, no. <laughs> we don't say 5'11". 5'11 doesn't exist. <laughs> on my height scale. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the mating process of human beings. There you go. Also, why does this guy look like a super jacked Dobre brother? <laughs> He's got a way better body, but he's got the same personality. Jesus. And then just when you thought they perfected the casting for this show, it turns out that this year, they've also casted a TikTok influencer. Let's go! Where are you from? I'm from Staten Island, New York. I'm a personal trainer. I'm an influencer on TikTok and Let's go. Let's go. So I was curious. So I found this guy on TikTok, and just because I wanted to know what his TikToks were like, and here's one. Just, just you know, being hot. It's a hot dude backing up a car. I don't know what else I expected, to be honest. I have to really commend the producers of how good they did this season at casting very horny people for this. These people are fucking horned up to their ears. My mom was a total cock block. Sorry, mom. When I moved out, I kind of went a little bit boy crazy. We gotta, we gotta make you I think about sex all day, every day. All day, every day, baby. Sexed up. And I also like how in this first episode of this season, they cast a fake host. It's a dude named Ben or something like that that strolls up in a Hawaiian shirt and sparries and tells them that, uh, you know, they're going to party later and that they're all going to get to boink each other later on in the night. And they're all like, yeah, sweet. Still not, nobody is like, so what's the point of this show? You know, what are we, what are we supposed to be doing? Just boinking? That's it? I'm ready. <laughs> Hopefully it's just one yeah. big gangbang. That'd be quite nice. Uh, they, yeah, never mind. So they don't care. It's just... <laughs> Hopefully the whole show is just one big gangbang. Are you curious? Like, how do you win the money? Aren't you curious about that? You just think you guys are just gonna fuck each other all summer and then they're all gonna... Y'all just gonna get to split the money? Is that... <laughs> no one's wondering what the point of the show is at this point? Really? We're halfway through this episode and no one has been like, So, 
I got a question. I know, like, you know, we're gonna fuck and everything, but what, what, is, what do we do other than that? You know, there's a lot of hours in the day. I can only fuck for one or two of those, you know, two, if I'm a little bit drunk, maybe, but what, what, for the other 10 hours during the day, what are we supposed to be doing? So for the next, like, 20 minutes, they just try and fuck each other, basically. It's kind of awesome. I think it's gonna be so weird to bang in front of you, though. I'm not saying that we're going to bang, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Just because you get going and you're really like, uh, you know, loud. <laughs> Is that how you do it? Like a jackrabbit? Mm-hmm. Damn. Again, impeccable flirting there. Impeccable. Is that how you do it? Like a jackrabbit? Yeah. Damn. I'll jackrabbit you. I'll jack you like a rabbit. <laughs> Damn. I'll fuck you. I'll fuck you. We're like a rabbit. We'll have tons of babies like a rabbit. In a mouth, there's no land over there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just bad. sea, isn't it? Yeah. First time at the beach, Cam? What do you reckon's on the other side of that? Nothing, because the earth is flat, dude. All right, so I went really hard on the last season because after the first episode, the show really fell apart and I totally expect that to happen with this season as well. But I have to say, as far as first episodes go, they did much better on this one. Between the fake host and the horned up people and the awful flirting, it's been really entertaining so far. But they went even further, which I respect. The last thing they let them do before they tell them they can't bone is have a party. But it's not a normal party, it's a costume party, and they make them dress up in these like pretty weird outfits. I could dress as like the lion and you could be like my lioness, you know what I'm saying? Oh. This guy's just full of, full of lions. It's official, I'm more horny than any other guy here. Dude, the amount of excitement that I feel right now for when this guy is told he cannot hook up with anyone and he's dressed like this, is through the roof right now. Excellent job, producers, excellent job. They were like, how can we humiliate this guy even more? Oh, I know, let's put him in a child's rhino costume. That's perfect. So the best part of this episode by far has to be when the TikTok influencer gets up in front of the group and he says, this is at their party. He says, all right, let's all get up in front of the group and whoever is like horny for that person basically does their mating call of whatever like animal they're dressed up as. I don't know. You know, at least it's some fucking challenge. You know, as an audience member sitting here, I'm like, finally a fucking challenge. Jesus Christ. Now, now we got a reality TV show on our hands. So one of the girls gets up and the TikTok guy crawls up to her on all fours and does these really cringy like animal roaring sounds and then bites her ass. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So she's like, wow, that was weird. And then the Dobre twin dude, uh, was who also likes this girl, gets up and just like walks over and makes out with her. And it's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? What are you doing, weirdo? And just makes out with her. And the TikTok guy's sitting there like, I mean, that's not an animal sound. <laughs> I said animal sound, dude, did you not hear me? <laughs> what the fuck? This guy's a douche. So then more people make out Two girls end up making out. It's getting crazy. People are getting horned up. You can feel the sex oozing out of the screen at this point. Nipples are hard. Dicks are hard. Boners are dicks. Nipples are ass. Everything's hard. Everything's poking. These people just want a fucking bone. It's very primal. Look at this. What is the rhino guy? What are you doing? Dog, what are you doing? Now we're gonna get demonetized for that. Thanks a lot, dude. Did you just put your rhino horn in her ass? Come on! Anyways, you get it. People are trying to fuck, right? So then the fake host comes back on. Uh-oh. And he says this. Well, before this night gets too wild, there's one more surprise for you guys. <laughs> what could it be? What could it be? A bunch of dildos? What could possibly make this show hornier? And this is the part where they reveal to them the show that they're really on. And I gotta be honest, they fucked it up. They fucked it up. Because the way they did it is the fake host goes, we have a very special guest. And then Lana, the little robot that runs the show, it's like an Amazon Alexa, basically. She comes out of the ground and they're all like, what, no, we're on Too Hot to Handle, no! And it's like kind of anticlimactic. I don't know, I just kind of wish that the fake host was like, here's my idea for the, here's my idea for this part, okay? The fake host, because it's so funny, this fake reality, he looks like every reality host combined into one and he's, he's like got this Hawaiian shirt on. If he was just like, you guys can't fuck and then they just beat the shit out of them. That would have been a way better ending to this episode. But instead, it just ends in sadness. The robot comes out and they're all just kind of like sad because 
because they can't bone. They thought they were gonna have a two month long orgy and now they're all like, so we, we gotta just form friendships now? And the audience is sitting here like, I don't wanna see people be friends. If I wanted to see people be friends, I'd watch Friends. I really wish they just ended the show here, you know? I would watch infinite seasons of this show if it was one episode where you met 10 hot new people, watched them flirt, and then told them they couldn't bone, and then the show ended. I wa that would go on for infinite seasons. I gave the whole last season, I think, a four out of 10. And I gotta give the first episode of this season probably a six out of 10, because it was a pretty good episode, but I am zero out of 10 excited to watch the rest of the season. Let me know if you want me to watch the rest of the season, though. I can keep reviewing these for you if you want, but one thing is certain, I definitely don't want to. Thanks for watching, guys. Go get uh, merch at codashofficial.com. I appreciate you, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.